What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to continue with the ChatGPT video series where we're basically going to be calling into ChatGPT OpenAI API to basically get code that we can run in Unity in runtime by using the Rustling compiler that we embedded on the previous videos. This video is also going to be restructuring the code so that we can actually call into the API instead of using the ChatGPT wrapper that I showed you previously where we implemented the Python ChatGPT wrapper, which worked great, but it's not officially supported. So I want to show you and do something that is more official, that is going to work for production. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. What I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna be implementing that, right? So we need to make a couple of changes to our code. So if I go in here and I look at the ChatGPT client, which I also have a game object for, if you remember, we have an API URL, and that URL is basically calling into a Python service, which is great if you want to use that, but that is not supported, so we're gonna be changing that. It also takes in an API key, and it's also going to be taking an organization, so we need to make some changes to this implementation. So the first thing that I need to do, though, is the object that we're passing in here to the ChatGPT settings needs to be modified. So if I go in here, we're gonna have to add a couple more things because ChatGPT requires additional information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a string, and this one is going to be the actual model. There's gonna be two models, and what the way that it work is basically one provides you with more tokens than another, and I'm not really 100% sure how they work, but all I know is there's two different models that you can use, and I'll show you those in just a minute. So we can also use another thing here that we're gonna be having to specify, so it's gonna be the API organization. So I'll show you where we can get this information from. So that's pretty much what we need to modify on this object. So if we go into the actual reference, which I pull from their documentation, as you can see, this is going to be the API that we're gonna be calling. And I'm not gonna be using this through Python, we're gonna be doing this from Unity. So there's gonna be two different models that we can use. I believe I'm using this GPT 3.5 Turbo. There's also one which is O301, which I believe it allows you to basically specify more tokens, and which means that you can get more data back, but I'm not 100% sure of that. You guys can look into that. But the model that we specify is going to be either this one or this one. Now that we change it, we should be able to specify those. This is gonna be also the parameters that we need to pass in. So this is gonna be basically our ChatGPT request. And then the response is gonna be in our ChatGPT response, which needs to match this implementation here. So what I'm gonna do and what I also did previously is I'm just gonna copy this. So I'm gonna go here into ChatGPT and I'm gonna say, can you provide me with a JSON, actually with a C sharp representation based on this JSON object. And it's going to generate it. I think by default it should generate it with the actual JSON property attributes. So as you guys can see here, it actually didn't do that, but we can tell it to do that. Can you regenerate the previous script classes but include JSON property attribute names? and make sure that we don't have a typo, and we can hit enter. Let's see if it's smart enough to know what it needs to generate. And it's actually pretty powerful, it's pretty crazy. And you guys can see now it's generating our JSON property role content and the choices. One thing that I did though is I prefix every single one of them with ChatGPT, and that's because I like code organization when I'm dealing with, with different you know technologies. So we can say, well, it's writing, we can say something like, can you, regenerate the classes with chat GPT as a prefix. And if you use the API, it's a lot faster, but I wasn't able to pass in code like the JSON file that I, that I sent in here. So I ended up just using chat.openai.com. So now that we have that though, we can go back into our Unity project, which is gonna be here. And we're gonna let it compile because we make some changes to the settings and where that's going to become handy is going to be in the contract, right? Right now, if we go into the response object, you're gonna see that I just have data because that's what our flash service was sending back. So I could do something like, I can just you know paste everything in here. And then basically that's going to be what we need. 
So what I need to do though is this ChatGPT response, if we go back into the documentation, let's go ahead and look in here and go into the API reference. This is gonna be all of these, right? We need to we need an object that represents all of these ones. So let's see if, if this generated everything that we, so it's going to be, it's not the ChatGPT usage, it's going to be ChatGPT completion ID object and create it. Let me make sure, yeah. So I don't know why I call it ChatGPT completion, it doesn't really matter what it's called, but I'm gonna rename that to be the ChatGPT response. And technically we could also bring in a namespace here for the list. And I'm gonna be moving this one all the way to the very top. By the time that you get this code, you're gonna have everything organized. Right now we're just gonna keep everything in here so that we it's easier for us to, to look at. So that's gonna be the first thing. So now if we go into, so this is gonna be the response, right? It's gonna be what we're going to be getting from ChatGPT and we're going to be deserializing these data so that we can use it in Unity. So on the ChatGPT request though, right now I have question and I also, it's really, that's really all I have is basically the prompt that I'm going to be executing. So what I'm gonna do though is I have to specify a couple more options in here. I'm gonna remove the question and I'm gonna paste this. It's basically gonna be the model. So it's gonna be that ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo or the other one that we saw on the API reference. I can also specify messages, and this is how you communicate with ChatGPT. If we look at this object and I do F12, you're gonna be passing in a role. In our case, the role is gonna be user. There's also system, there's also assistant, and you can read more about, about that in the documentation and in the content, right? It's gonna be what we're going to be asking ChatGPT to do. And I'm sure there's a lot more than what I'm you know, describing today, but I think this is gonna get us you know, moving forward to be able to implement this. So, the next thing that I need to do is we're gonna to need to modify the ChatGPT client. So if we go back to the client, obviously we're gonna get an error here because the object that we are passing to ChatGPT is going to have to change. So we're gonna to have to do and remove this. And the way that it's gonna work though, this is now going to be taking, it's still gonna be taking a request, but the request is going to have to include a model, right? So I'm gonna have to say model and then chat GPT settings. And it's gonna be the API model that we modify at the beginning. And I'm also going to have to pass in an array of messages. So I'm just gonna say messages equal new. And this one is going to be a chat GPT message array. And the way that you can do this in line is you can just do curly braces. And then I can basically just specify a new chat message and chat GPT message. And then you can pass in you know, anything that you want to specify to chat GPT, which in my case, role is going to be user. And then the content is going to be the actual prompt that we're passing into this method. So this should take care of what we need to do with chat GPT as far as, you know, how we ask a question, how we make a request. So we're doing a post. We don't need this debug equal true. This is more for the flash service to show additional debugging information. But I think for now it's it's okay because I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it available for both. So we're still gonna do, I think I'm still gonna do the request content tab that JSON. I don't think I removed that on the final code, but we're gonna have to specify a couple of more headers in here. So the other header, because this is now secure, we're gonna have to pass in an authorization header. So if you do authorization and then the authorization is going to be, uh, you're gonna have to do it this way. So just do bearer. And then we're gonna have to pass in the actual token that we have from ChatGPT, which will show you how to get that as well. And then the token is actually going to be, in our case, gonna be the key. So what's gonna happen is whenever we're making a post request, we're going to be passing this, basically it's like a token. It's a secure identifier that if it expires, you won't be able to call it, but it's going to be all tracked through OpenAI. So it's gonna allow us to basically log in and then make a request. And then the next thing that I can do is I'm gonna say, okay, you know what? I also need to specify an organization so that ChatGPT knows who I am. So it's gonna be a combination of organization and also a bear token. So it's gonna say organization and then comma. In the organization, we're just gonna be getting that from the ChatGPT settings. And there are a million ways to do this. This is, like I said, this is just a way that I ended up implementing this. The other thing that you can also do if you wanna look at request start time, and I did this on the final code so that I knew how long this was gonna be taking. 
So we can just say daytime that now, so we know when that is started, and then by the time that it finishes, we would know, you know, what how long is that that is taking. So we can do something like this on the actual response time. So I'm just gonna do. I think I did on the response. I ended up changing this a little bit. So if we go to the ChatGPT response, I'm going to be adding another property in here. And then this one I decided to do a uh, double. And then in the double, I'm just gonna call it response. And we can say total time. And this is gonna be the time in milliseconds that it took to, to actually make the request. And this is just so that, you know, if you guys wanna know how long it's taking, in my opinion, I think that was very important because I wanted to know how long you know this was actually taking. So we can do we can do something like this. And then we can just say response here. Let's make sure that let's see, I'm just gonna do this and response. I'm just going to say response total time. And this is where you can say something like daytime that now, and then we're gonna say minus the actual request start time. And then we can get basically the total amount of milliseconds so that we have that information available for us. So this code right here is gonna change and it's actually gonna be a lot easier now because we can just say JSON convert, deserialize, and the object that we're gonna be deserializing is gonna be chat GPT and it's gonna be the response. And then we need to tell it which train we're going to be deserializing. And then obviously you need to add more error handling in here just in case something happens. We wanna make sure that that code doesn't, doesn't really blow up. So this should allow us to make a call now to, you know, to ChatGPT. So the next thing that I wanted to show you though is in the ChatGPT tester, a lot of things are gonna blow up because now the code that the ChatGPT response is not on the data string. So the way that we can do this now is we can basically just go into our response object here and then go into choices. We can get the first choice. And then the first choice has a message and we can also grab the content. Sometimes it's good to basically do a nullable just in case this information is null so we don't get, you know, we don't get an exception and we can say chat GPT content. And for now, I'm just gonna show you the content that is coming back from ChatGPT so that we know that this is all working. I also changed a lot of these codes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this. And basically, I'm just gonna comment this out. I don't wanna run that code right now because I wanna make sure that you know how things are running. So if we go back into our ChatGPT project, now we can make sure, okay, let's see what errors we have. And we need to fix some of these things because if not, it's going to start throwing a lot of errors. So this is gonna be the ChatGPT code cleanup code, which I actually changed, so I'll just show you. For now, let's just leave it like this and then we'll go back through and then update that. I'm actually gonna be sharing that code so you guys can look at that. Basically, the, the work of the extension method that I just show you is basically to get only the source code so that when we run it, it's not including all the information that ChatGPT is describing. So that's what that code cleanup is doing. So if we go to the ChatGPT client, right now we have a lot of information here that we're going to be needing. So if we go back into the OpenAI and we look at the, the endpoint, so we're gonna need this endpoint first, right? So let's go ahead and get that and then go back into Unity and then just paste it in there. We're also gonna need an API key. So if you go to your account and generate a new API key, we can just do that by doing this. And just make sure you don't use this key. I'm going to be removing these keys as soon as I'm done with this video. So just make sure you log in with your account. And I think you need to set up a payment. It's really cheap. I didn't really notice much of a, a big cost when it came to calling this, you know, hundreds of times for this video. So I think for development, it's gonna be very, very cheap. And then the API model, if we go back here, you're also, so I'm actually gonna pull the organization which I can get from settings and then we can just put that in here. The API model, I'm gonna go into my API reference and then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the GPT-3.5 dash turbo. That's the one that I've been testing with. And then I should give you everything that we need to do. Okay, so we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and call as chat GPT and then go into our code, make sure that we have the prompt. And if we go into the prompt, looks like we have what we specify through the inspector. And then if you look at the URL here, we have the new endpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and just unpin this information. I'm gonna step in 
and then step over. So now we have the bytes of this JSON serialized object, which is going to be required for making that call. And then just setting a couple handlers in here, a couple of headers. The authorization header, we have our key here. We have our organization, and I know that because org is a prefix. We have the request start time, which is 12, 13 p.m. Mountain Standard. And then now if I step over, we should be getting information here on uh, the response info. If everything works, if it blows up, then we'll find out. And this is the first attempt, and we did get the response back. Obviously, this is really hard to read because it's all condensed, but this is all JSON, so I could put it into VS Code and then basically prettify it, and then you'll be able to see. Actually, let's do that so you guys can see how that looks. So if I were to open a VS Code, or you can do that with any tool that you like, I prefer to use this. And then we can just do Control Shift P and then JSON. Oh, let me try that again. Control Shift P and then JSON pretty print. You're gonna see the data that came back, right? We have ID, object, what I show you on the documentation. And here's the code. Here's the code that is generated from the question that I asked. So that's awesome. So let's go ahead and see if we can deserialize it. And now we should have an object that represents and looks like everything, yeah, everything looks good. We have our message and we have our content and now this looks pretty, right? This is what we want. And we actually just got marked down because I think that's that's what I, I decided to tell it to only include the code and not everything else. And if you go up, I think is what I, I think it gets appended at the end. And do not include any explanations. So ChatGPT was smart enough to know to, to know to do that. And we have the response time that took, I mean, this says 97 seconds because it's taking into account that I'm doing a debug session, but I think it's taking about from three to six seconds to be able to call into ChatGPT. And then if I go back and close this, now we can go back into Unity. You're gonna see that now that should be rendered. So let me go ahead and close out of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the debugger because that's making Unity go run slow. So now we can see, right? We have the coding here and we can see that we got the using statements. We have everything that we needed. We also have the class name that we specify. And then in this case, we have number of spheres, a diameter, and there's a private material, which is great because I don't want this to have to force us to create a material or pass in a material through the inspector because a lot of times that won't happen because this code is gonna run at runtime. All right, guys, so this is a new version of the project, which I'm gonna be submitting to GitHub. It's going to be public, everybody can get it. And let me just show you this scene. This is gonna be the ChatGPT logger. And this one is going to allow us to ask ChatGPT a question and we're going to be getting the code back. We're actually going to be able to compile the code because I'm using that Rosling uh, compiler, which I show you in the previous videos how to do that. So this is also using a scriptable object as a question. So I did a lot of, I added a lot of features to this. So I think this video will be too long if I walk you through everything, but this is very simple. This is a prompt prefix constant. We're gonna say, this is gonna be a constant that I don't think I need to repeat every single time. So that's what I put it in here. And this says a uh, Unity C Sharp script that, and then you can append additional information. In this case, I say 20 primitive type cubes. You can say creates 20 primitive type cubes. I think that's more, you know, that's more correct. So it will say a Unity C Sharp class a script that creates 20 primitive type cubes and consistently rotate them along the Y axis at a very fast speed. So, and I also have a few reminders in here. I wanna make sure that I do not include any explanations always include code with markdown, do not require any prefabs, do not require any references, and then all the references should not be null. The reason for that is because ChatGPT kept on sending me, basically requiring that we pass in references through the inspector, and I don't wanna do that if I want to compile this code right away as, as we get it. All right, so let's go ahead and try it and see what we get. So as soon as we hit us, you're gonna see the title in here. I also have a little progress bar that gets executed. And I'm also basically displaying the prompt that we're asking. So it looks like we got an answer back. And the interesting part is that this took only five seconds to execute versus the Python wrapper, which honestly was taking about 30 seconds. Sometimes was timing out. So this is going to be a lot more reliable that using that. So you can see that we have uh, basically a private cubes instance, which is an array. And then it's basically declaring an array of that size. 
and then going through each cube and then creating a primitive. So, and also going through each one of the cubes and rotating them. So if we, get, if we hit compile code, we should be able to get a response of what we ask it to do, which is, which is pretty, pretty cool. So another thing that I can do though, is if I were to, I think I can just go ahead and ask ChatGPT one more time. And you're gonna notice that as soon as I do that, it's going to look a little bit different this time. So we can actually move them down. Let me see if I can grab them all. Move them, maybe keep them in here so we can see that code that got generated. So if I go here, and this is actually appending the code that we got this last time. And this last time is gonna look a little bit different. We now have a list instead of an array. We have the speed specified here and also the rotation. This is also going through the max value, changing the position, and also doing the rotation. So let's try to compile this. And now it looks a little bit different because ChatGPT, it's AI, right? We haven't really tell ChatGPT exactly what we want it. So it has the freedom to choose what to give us. So that is this scene, which I think, I think you're going to enjoy playing with. Now, if you want to do something more robust, in this case, I did another demo and we can just move this one a little bit. We can probably just move the logger a little bit up so that we can see that code as it comes. So the way that this one works though, is I wanted to do something a little bit different. And, you know, I brought in the started assets and the started assets include a player armature. So if we look at the tester here, what I'm telling it to do is I say, okay, you know what, ChatGPT, I want a Unity C Sharp class a script that finds a player armature game object and get the starter assets input component and sets the move field to a vector two with 0.3 flow for X and zero for Y, which means that it's going to move the character along X at a 0.3 speed. And then I'm also setting that move field to zero after three seconds. And then after that happens, I'm going to be setting the jump field, which is gonna allow the character to jump to true. And then for, you know, for three seconds. So this one might or might not work. I found that about 70% of the time it was working. The other 30% it was casting problems, but it just gives you an idea of the power, right? So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask ChatGPT. We're going to be getting, you know, the description that I just specify. And if everything works, I think I should be able to, to tell whether this is gonna work or not by looking at the code. So this is good. It's basically trying to find the player armature, which you can see here. If it's not null, then it's gonna try to get the started assets input, which I know that this component has. And if you scroll down here, you're gonna see a starter assets input. We can see the move field and the jump field that I specify on the question. So we should be able to get into this code and say, okay, input is not null. And if it's not null, it's going to basically do that. And it's gonna invoke that every three seconds. Actually, it's going to reset the move after three seconds. So let's go ahead and try and see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and compile the code and actually work the first time, that's funny. So the player, you can see that the player started jumping and then as soon as we did that, then it started walking. So I think it, you know, it followed some of the indications that we told it to do. If I were to hit compile again, it's going to execute that one more time. So I'm gonna do one more time. It's doing a jump and then doing a walk right away. So if I were to do this one more time, let's go ahead and hit play here and then restart it. I'm curious to show you what's gonna happen if I do it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask ChatGPT for that. This time let's pay attention to how long it's taking to generate. I didn't look at it last time. You probably will be able to tell that by just going back and looking at the video. Okay, so it looks like it took about, oh wow, it took about 11 seconds to execute, okay. No bad, but I think in this case it's doing something similar. In this case it's setting the move property right away to 0.3. And then after three seconds it's doing a reset on player input. And you can look at all the coding here as it got generated. So let's go ahead and try to compile it. I'm just going to be lazy and see if this compiles and looks like it did compile. And now we can see the character starts jumping, actually walking and then jumping. And as soon as that happens, then the player stops. In this instance, I wanted to try to clone the player amateur, but loaded from resources, which I have it in here. So if we look at the question that I'm gonna be asking it. So this one I'm saying, a Unity C Sharp script that loads a player amateur from resources consistently every half a second. Get the started assets input component set the move field to a vector two with 1.0 flow for X 
and zero for y. Then set the jump field to true. So we're gonna go ahead and try if this is going to work. And I had some really interesting results it's just uh, when I ran this. So hopefully we get those happening in this instance. So, which, which is interesting because I can't really, you know, uh, guarantee that it's gonna do the same thing, but let's go ahead and try. So we have a flow timer, we have player input controllers, that's the class that it came out, it came up with. And then we have a timer that is getting executed half a second, which is what I specify. As soon as that happens, it sets it to zero. And then it's trying to load the player armature from the from resources, which is great. And then if it's not null, it's gonna try to get the, I think this is gonna work, let's try. If not, then we'll get a compiler error. Okay, so player armature could not be found. And okay, so that, that makes sense because these player armature load is not correct. So let's try one more time. So that's when I say it's not going to be guaranteed that it's going to work. You can do a retry or be more explicit when you're asking ChatGPT for questions. So, okay, this is gonna work this time because at least on this part, because it's saying, I'm gonna load a game object and then it's going to be, that's going to be the name and then I'm going to instantiate it. Okay, so let's try this this time around. Okay, now I can see the guy just jumping and jumping and jumping, but at this time I don't know that it's cloning I don't know that it's cloning that player controller and I don't see where it's doing. It's instantiating that, but only on the awake. Even though I told that code to basically consistently, let's say consistently every half a second. Okay, so let's see if we can, if we can do that one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and ask ChatGPT one more time. From resources consistently every half a second. Okay, I don't know that I'm telling it. Well, I'm telling it to do it every, every half a second. So let's try one more time and see what happens. Okay, so there's a while looping here, which could be dangerous, but it is an enumerator with a core routine. And I think this is going to work because it is loading also a player amateur from a game object. And then it's also instantiating it every single time. And there, there is a way for seconds, which is half a second, which is what I was expecting. Okay, there we go. So this time he got it right, which, and you can kind of hear the sounds of it actually, you know, when they land and when they start walking, it just looks like an army is starting to march. And you guys can see here that they are all getting instantiated. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you. There's unlimited use cases and things that we can do with this. But if you like these, let me know in the comments and I'll be able to, you know, create more videos. Or if you have a specific use case that you want me to look at, let me know as well, but that's everything for today. And again, if you can subscribe and set the ring to the notification bell to, to true, I was gonna say true in code, but basically set it so that you can get notified when I get, when I release new videos, please do so because that's gonna help me with future videos. So thank you very much guys.